Chapter 11 Dual Nature of Radiation and Matter 11.1 Introduction The Maxwell equation of electromagnetism and Hertz experiment on the generation and detection of electromagnetic waves in 1887 strongly established the wave nature of light towards the same period at the end of 19th century experimental investigations on conduction of electricity through gases at low pressure in a discharge tube led to many historic discoveries the discovery of x rays by rochin 1895 and the electrons by j j thompson in 1897 were important milestones in the understanding of atomic structure it was found that at sufficiently low pressure of about 0.001 mm of mercury column a discharge took place between two electrodes on applying the electric field to the gas in a discharge tube a fluorescent glow appeared on the glass opposite to cathode the color of glow of the glass dependent on the type of glass it being yellowish green for soda glass the cause of this fluorescence was attributed to the radiation which appeared to be coming from the cathode these cathode rays were discovered in 1870 by william crookes who later in 1879 suggested that these rays consisted of streams of fast moving negatively charged particles the british physicist j j thompson confirmed this hypothesis by applying mutually perpendicular electric and magnetic fields across the discharge tube j j thompson was the first to determine experimentally the speed and the specific charge of the cathode ray particles they were found to travel with speeds ranging from about 0.1 to 0.2 times the speed of light the presently accepted value of e by m is 1.76 into 10 to the power 11 coulomb per kg further the value of e by m was found to be independent of the nature of the material or metal used as cathode or the gas introduced in the discharge tube this observation suggested the universality of the cathode ray particles around the same time in 1887 it was found that certain metals when irradiated by ultraviolet light emitted negatively charged particles having small speeds also certain metals when heated to a high temperature were found to emit negatively charged particles the value of e by m of these particles was found to be the same as that for cathode ray particles these observations thus established that all these particles although produced under different conditions were identical in nature j j thompson in 1897 named these particles as electrons and suggested that they were fundamental universal constituents of matter for his epoch making discovery of electron through his theoretical and experimental investigations on conduction of electricity by gases he was awarded as on an electron he found that the charge on an oil droplet was always an integral multiple of an elementary charge 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb millikan's experiment established that electric charge is quantized from the values of electric charge and specific charge and mass the electron could be determined 11.2 electron emission we know that metals have free electrons that are responsible for their conductivity however the free electrons cannot normally escape out of the metal surface if an electron attempts to come out of the metal the metal surface acquires a positive charge and pulls the electron back to the metal the free electron is thus held inside the metal surface by the attractive forces of the ions consequently the electron can come out of the metal surface only if it has got sufficient energy to overcome the attractive pull a certain minimum amount of energy is required to be given to an electron to pull it out from the surface of the metal this minimum the surface impurities not from table 11.1 that work function of platinum is the highest while it is the lowest for cesium the minimum energy required 
for the electron emission from the metal surface can be supplied to the free electrons by any one of the following physical processes. Number 1. Thermionic emission. By suitably heating, sufficient thermal energy can be imparted to the free electrons to enable them to come out of the metal. Number 2. Field emission. By applying a very strong electric field of the order of 10 to the power 8 volt per meter to a metal, electrons can be pulled out of the metal as in a spark plug. Number 3. Photoelectric emission. When the light of suitable frequency illuminates a metal surface, electrons are emitted from the metal surface. These photogenerated electrons are called photoelectrons. 11.3 photoelectric effect 11.3.1 hertz observations the phenomenon of photoelectric emission was discovered in 1887 by henrich hertz during his electromagnetic wave experiments in his experimental investigation on the production of electromagnetic waves by means of a spark discharge hertz observed that high voltage sparks across the detector loop were enhanced when the emitter plate was illuminated by ultraviolet light from an arc lamp. Light shining on the metal surface somehow facilitated the escape of free charged particles which we now know as electrons. When light falls on a metal surface, some electrons near the 3.3.2 Hallwatch and Lenard's observation. Wilhelm Hallwatch and Philip Leonard investigated the phenomenon of photoelectric emission in detail during 1886 to 1902. Leonard observed that when ultraviolet radiations were allowed to fall on the emitter plate of an evacuated glass tube closing two electrodes, current flows in the circuit. As soon as ultraviolet radiations were stopped, current flow also stopped. These observations indicate that when ultraviolet radiations fall on the emitter plate C, the electrons are ejected from it which are attracted towards the positive collector plate A by electric field. Thus, the electrons flow through the evacuated glass tube resulting in the current flow. Light falling on the surface of the emitter causes the current in the external circuit. Hallwatch and Leonard studied how these photoelectron current varied with collector plate potential with frequency and intensity of the incident light. Hallwatch in 1888 undertook the study further and connected a negatively charged zinc plate to an electroscope. He observed that the zinc plate lost its charge. From these observations, he concluded that negatively charged particles were emitted from the zinc plate under the action of after the discovery of electron in 1897, it became evident that the incident light causes electron to be emitted from the emitter plate due to the negative charge. The emitted electrons were pushed towards the collector plate by electric field. Hallwatch and Nelland also observed that when ultraviolet light fell on the emitter plate, no electrons were emitted at all when the frequency of incident light was smaller than a certain minimum value called the threshold frequency. This minimum frequency depends on the nature of the material of the emitter plate. It was found that certain elements like zinc, cadmium, magnesium, etc. responded only to ultraviolet light having short wavelength to cause electron emission. However, some alkali metals such as lithium, sodium, potassium, cesium and rubidium were sensitive even to visible light. All these photosensitive substances emit electrons when they are illuminated by light. After the discovery of electrons, 11.4 Experimental Study of Photoelectric Effect depicts a schematic view of the arrangement used for experimental study of photoelectric effect. It consists of an evacuated glass or quartz tube having thin photosensitive plate C and another metal plate A. Monochromatic light from the source S of sufficiently short wavelength passes through the window W and falls on the photosensitive plate C. A transparent quartz window is sealed onto the glass tube which permits ultraviolet radiation to pass through it and irradiate the photosensitive plate C. The electron
Such ones are emitted by the plate C and are collected by the plate A by electric field created by the battery. Battery maintains the potential difference. The electrons are attracted to it. The emission of electrons causes flow of electric current in the circuit. The potential difference between the emitter and collector plates is measured by a voltmeter, whereas the resulting photocurrent coming flowing in the circuit is measured by microammeter. The photoelectric current can be increased or decreased by varying the potential of collector plate A with respect to emitter plate C. The intensity and frequency of the incident light can be varied as can the potential difference V between the emitter C and collector A. We use the experimental arrangement of figure 11.1 to study the radiation variation of photocurrent with intensity of radiation frequency of incident radiation 11.4.1 effect of intensity of light on photocurrent the collector a is maintained at a positive potential with respect to emitter c so that electrons ejected from c are attracted towards collector a keeping the frequency of incident radiation and the potential fixed the intensity of light is varied and the resulting photoelectric current is measured each time it is found that the photocurrent increases linearly with the intensity of incident light as shown graphically in figure 11.2 the photocurrent is directly proportional to the number of photoelectrons emitted per second this implies that the number of photoelectrons emitted per second in 4.2 effect of potential on photoelectric current if we keep the plate a at some positive potential with respect to the plate c and illuminate the plate c with light of fixed frequency nu and fixed intensity i1 we next vary the positive potential of plate a gradually and measure the resulting photocurrent each time it is found that the photoelectric current increases with the increase in positive potential at some stage for a certain positive potential of plate A, all the emitted photoelectrons are collected by plate A and photoelectric current becomes maximum or saturates. If we increase the accelerating potential of plate A further, the photocurrent When the polarity is reversed, the electrons are repelled and only sufficient energetic electrons are able to reach collector A. The photocurrent is found to decrease rapidly until it drops to zero at a certain sharply defined critical value of the negative potential V0 on the plate A. For a particular frequency of incident radiation, the minimum negative potential V0 given to the plate A for which the photocurrent stops or becomes zero is called the cutoff or stopping potential. The interpretation of the observation in terms of photoelectrons is straightforward. All the photoelectrons emitted from the metal do not have the same energy. Photoelectric current is zero when stopping potential is sufficient to repel even most energy. It cannot be in this experiment with incident radiation of the same frequency but of higher intensity E2 and e I2 and I3. We note that saturation currents are now found to be at greater values. This shows that more electrons are being emitted per second proportional to the intensity of incident radiation but the stopping potential remains same as that for the incident radiation intensity i1 as shown graphically in figure 11.3 thus for a given frequency of the incident radiation the stopping potential is independent of its intensity in other words the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons depends on the light source and the emitted plate material but it is independent of the intensity of incident radiation. 11.4.3 Effect of Frequency of Incident Radiation on Stopping Potential We now study the relation between frequency nu and the incident radiation of stopping potential V0. We suitably adjust the same intensity of light radiation at various frequencies and study the variation of photocurrent with collector plate potential. The resulting variation is shown in figure 11.4. We obtain different values of stopping potential but the same value for the saturation current for incident radiation of different frequencies. The energy
energy of the emitted electron depends on the frequency of the incident radiations. The stopping potential is more negative for higher frequencies of incident radiation. Note from figure 11.4 that stopping potentials are in the order V03 is greater than V02 is greater than V01. If the frequencies are greater in order V3 is new 3 is greater than new 2 is greater than new 1. This implies that greater the frequency of incident light, greater is the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. Consequently, we need greater retarding potential to stop them completely. If we plot a graph between frequency of incident radiation and corresponding stopping potential for different metals, we get a straight line as shown in figure 11.5. The graph shows that the stopping potential V0 varies linearly with the frequency of incident radiation for a given photosensitive material. There exists a certain minimum cutoff frequency nu naught for which the stopping potential is zero. These observations have two implications. Number one, the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons varies linearly with the frequency of incident radiation but is independent of its intensity. Number two, for a frequency nu of incident radiation lower than the cutoff frequency nu naught, no photoelectron is possible even if the intensity is large. This minimum cutoff frequency nu naught is called threshold frequency. It is different for different metals. Different photosensitive materials respond differently to light. Selenium is more sensitive than zinc or copper. The same photosensitive substance gives different response to light of different wavelengths. For example, ultraviolet light gives rise to a photoelectric effect in copper while green or red light does not. Note that in all the above experiments, it is found that if frequency of the incident radiation exceeds the threshold frequency, the photoelectric emission starts instantaneously without any apparent time lag. Even if the incident radiation is very dim, it is now known that emission starts in a time of the order 10 to the power minus 9 seconds or less. We now summarize the experimental features and observations described in this section. Number 1. For a given photosensitive material and frequency of incident radiation, the photoelectric current is directly proportional to the in in intensity of incident light. Number 2. For a given photosensitive material and frequency of incident radiation, saturation current is found to be proportional to the intensity of incident radiation, whereas the stopping potential is independent of its intensity. Number 3. For a given photosensitive material, there exists a certain minimum cutoff frequency of the incident radiation called the threshold frequency, below which no emission of photoelectron takes place. No matter how intense the incident light is above the threshold frequency, the maximum kinetic energy of emitted electrons increases linearly with the frequency of the incident radiation, but is independent of its intensity. Number 4. The photoelectric emission is an instantaneous process without any apparent time lag even when the incident radiation is made exceedingly dim.
wave nature of light was well established by the end of 19th century. The phenomena of interference, diffraction and polarization were explained in a natural and satisfactory way by the wave picture of light. According to this picture, light is an electromagnetic wave consisting of electric and magnetic fields with continuous distribution of energy over the region of space over which the wave is extended. Let us now see if this wave picture of light can explain the observations on photoelectric emission given in the previous section. According to the wave picture of light, three electrons at the surface of the metal absorb the radiant energy continuously. The greater the intensity of radiation, the greater are the amplitude of electric and magnetic fields. Consequently, the greater intensity, the greater would be the energy absorbed by each electron. In this picture, the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons on the surface is then expected to increase with increase in intensity. Also, no matter what, the frequency of radiation is a sufficiently intense beam of radiation should be able to impart enough energy to the electrons so that they exceed the minimum energy needed to escape from the metal surface. A threshold frequency therefore should not exist. These expectations of the wave theory directly contradict the observation 1, 2 and 3 given at the end of subsection 11.4.3. Further, we should note that in the wave picture the absorption of energy by the electron takes place continuously over the entire wavefront of radiation. Since a large number of electrons are 11.6 Einstein's photoelectric equation, energy quantum of radiation. In 1905, Albert Einstein proposed a radially, radically new picture of electromagnetic radiation to explain photoelectric effect. In this picture, photoelectric emission does not take place by continuous absorption of energy from radiation. Radiation energy is built up of discrete units the so-called quanta of energy of radiation. Each quantum of radiant energy the ener has energy h nu, where h is Planck's constant and nu frequency of light. In photoelectric effect, an electron absorbs a quantum of energy of radiation. If this quantum of energy absorbed exceeds the minimum energy needed for the electron to escape from the metal surface, the electron is emitted with maximum kinetic energy. K max is equal to H nu minus phi naught. More tightly bound electron will emerge with kinetic energies less than the maximum value. Note that the intensity of light of a given frequency is determined by the number of photons incident per second. Increasing the intensity will increase the number of emitted electrons per second. However, the maximum kinetic energy of emitted photoelectrons is determined by the energy of each photon. Equation 11.12 is known as Einstein's photoelectric equation. We now see that this equation accounts in a simple and elegant manner all the observations on photoelectric effect given at the end of subsection 11.4.3. According to the equation, K max depends linearly on nu and is independent of intensity of radiation in agreement with the observation. This has happened from the absorption of a single quantum of radiation by a single electron. The intensity of radiation that is proportional to the number of energy quanta per unit area per unit time is irrelevant to this basic process. Since K max must be non negative, equation 11.2 implies that photoelectric emission is possible only if H nu is greater than phi naught or nu is greater than nu naught, where nu naught is equal to phi naught upon H. Equation 11.3 shows that greater the work function phi naught, higher the minimum or threshold frequency nu naught needed to emit photoelectrons. Thus, there exists a threshold frequency nu naught for the metal surface, below which no photoelectric emission is possible, no matter how intense the incident radiation may be or how long it falls on the surface. In this picture, intensity of radiation as noted above is proportional to the number of energy quanta per unit area per unit time. The 
greater the number of energy quanta available, greater is the number of electrons absorbing the energy quanta and greater therefore is the number of electrons coming out of the metal. This explains why for nu is greater than nu naught, photoelectric current is proportional to intensity. In Einstein's picture, the basic elementary process involved in photoelectric effect is the absorption of light quantum by an electron. This process is instantaneous. Thus, whatever may be the intensity, that is, the number of quanta of radiation per unit area per unit time, photoelectric emission is instantaneous. Low intensity does not mean delay in emission, since the basic elementary process is the same. Intensity only determines how many electrons are able to participate in the elementary process and therefore photoelectric current. Using equation 11.1, the photoelectric equation 11.2 can be written as Ev0 is equal to H nu minus phi0 for nu greater than nu0 or V0 is equal to H upon E nu minus phi0 upon E. This is an important result. It predicts that the V0 versus nu curve is a straight line with slope equal to H upon E, independent of the nature of the material. During 1906 to 1916, Millikan performed a series of experiments on photoelectric effect aimed at disproving Einstein's photoelectric equation. He measured the slope of the straight line observed on sodium, similar to that shown in figure 11.2. Using the known value of E, he determined the value of Planck's constant H. This value was close to the value of Planck's constant equal to 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second, determined in an entirely different context. In this way, in 1916, Millikan proved the validity of Einstein's photoelectric equation instead of disproving it. The successful explanation of photoelectric effect using the hypothesis of light quantum and the experimental determination of the values of H and phi naught in agreement with the values obtained from the experiments led to the acceptance of Einstein's picture of photoelectric effect. Millikan verified photoelectric equation with great precision for a number of alkali metal over a wide range of radiation frequencies. 11.7 Particle Nature of Light the photon. Photoelectric effect thus gave evidence to the strange fact that light in interaction with matter behaved as if it was made of quanta or packets of energy with ener each of energy H nu. Is the light quantum of energy to be associated with a particle? Einstein arrived at an important result that light quantum can also be associated with momentum. A definite value of energy as well as momentum is a strong sign that light quantum can be associated with a particle. This particle was later named photon. The particle-like behavior of light was further confirmed in 1924 by the experiment of to theoretical physics and photoelectric effect. In 1923, Millikan was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on the elementary charge of electricity and on photoelectric effect. We can summarize the photon picture of electromagnetic radiation as follows. Number 1. In interaction of radiation with matter, radiation behaves as if it is made up of particles called photons. Number 2. Each photon has energy E equal to H nu and momentum P is equal to H nu upon C and speed C is the speed of light. Number 3. All photons of light of a particular frequency nu or wavelength lambda have the same energy and momentum, whatever the intensity of radiation may be. By increasing the intensity of given wavelength, there is only an increase in the number of photons per second crossing a given area, with each photon having the same energy. Thus, photon energy is independent of intensity of radiation. Number 4. Photons are electrically neutral and are not deflected by electric and magnetic fields. I am leaving examples. 11.1, 11.2, 11 11.3 for you to handle. You can pause the video and solve those questions.
11.8 wave nature of matter the dual wave particle nature of light comes out clearly from what we have learned in this and preceding chapters the wave nature of light shows up in the phenomena of interference diffraction and polarization on the other hand the photoelectric effect and compton effect which involve energy and momentum transfer radiation behaves as if it is made up of a bunch of particles the photons whether the particle or wave description is best suited for understanding an experiment depends on the nature of the experiment for example in familiar phenomenon of seeing an object by an eye both this both descriptions are important gathering and focusing mechanism of light by the eye lens is well if radiation has a dual nature might not the particles of nature also exhibit wave like character in 1924 the french physicist louis victor de broglie put forward bold hypothesis that moving particles of matter should display wave like properties under suitable conditions he reasoned that nature was symmetrical and that the two basic physical entities matter and energy must have symmetrical character if radiation shows dual aspects so would matter de broglie proposed that wavelength lambda associated with particle of momentum p was given as lambda is equal to h upon p which is equal to h upon mv where m is the mass of the particle and v it that is evident in the deep equation 11.5 for a material particle is basically a hypothesis whose validity can be tested only by experiment however it is interesting to see that it is satisfied also by a photon for a photon as we have seen p is equal to h nu upon c therefore h upon p is equal to c upon nu is equal to lambda that is the de broglie wavelength of a photon given by equation 11.5 equals to the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation for which photon is a quantum of energy and momentum clearly from 11 equation 11.5 lambda is smaller for a heavier particle or more energetic particle for example de broglie wavelength of a ball of mass 0.12 kg moving with a speed of 20 meter per second is easily calculated equal to mv is equal to 0.12 kg into 20 meter per second is equal to 2.40 kg meter per second by lambda is equal to h upon p is equal to 2.76 into 10 to the power minus 34 meter this wavelength is so small that it is beyond any measurement this is the reason why microscopic objects in our daily life do not show any wave like properties on the other hand in subatomic domain The wave character of particle is significant and measurable. Consider an electron accelerated from rest through a potential V. The kinetic energy K of electron equals to the work done on it by the electric field. K is equal to EV. Now K is equal to half mv square is equal to 2 p square upon 2m. So that p is equal to under root 2 mk is equal to under root 2 mev. The de Broglie wavelength lambda of the electron is then lambda equals to h upon p is equal to h upon root 2 mk is equal to h upon under root 2 mev substituting the numerical values of h m e we get lambda is equal to 1.227 upon under root v newton nanometer the v is the magnitude of accelerating potential in volts for 120 volt accelerating potential equation 11.11 gives lambda is equal to 0.112 nanometer this wavelength is of the same order as the space spacing between the atomic planes in crystals this suggests that matter base associated with an electron could be verified by crystal diffraction the de broglie hypothesis in the was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics for his discovery of the wave nature of electron the matter wave picture elegantly incorporated the heisenberg's uncertainty principle according to the principle it is not possible to measure both the position and momentum of an electron at the exactly same time there 
is always some ascent uncertainty delta x in the specification of position and sub uncertainty delta p in the specification of momentum the product of delta x and delta p is of the order of h with h is equal to h upon 2 pi that is delta x into delta p is approximately equal to h equation 11.12 shows that the possibility that delta x is zero but then delta p must be infinite in the order that the product is non zero similarly if delta p is zero delta x must be infinite ordinarily both delta x and delta p are non zero such that their products is of the order of h now if an electron has a definite momentum p that is delta p is equal to zero by the de broglie relation it has a definite wavelength lambda a wavelength of definite wavelength extends all over the space by bond's probability interpretation of this means that electron is not localized in any finite region of space that is the position uncertainty is finite infinite which is consistent with the uncertainty principle in general the matter wave associated with the electron is not extended all over the space it is a wave packet of extending over some finite region of space in that case the lex is not infinite but has the same finite value depending on the extension of the wave packet also you must appreciate that a wave packet of finite extension does not have a single wavelength it is built up of wavelengths spread around some central wavelength certainty principle it can be shown that the wave packet of description together with de broglie relation and bond's probability interpretation reproduce the heisenberg's uncertainty principle exactly in chapter 12 the de broglie relation will be seen to justify bose's postulate on quantization of angular momentum of electron in an atom figure 11.6 shows a schematic diagram of a localized wave packet and an extended wave with fixed wavelength I am leaving example 11.4, 11.5 for you to look upon later, or you can pause the video and solve it. Eleven point nine, Davison and Jomol experiment. The wave nature of electrons was first experimentally verified by C. J. Davison and L. S. Jomol in nineteen twenty seven, and independently. by J B Thomson in 1928 who discovered sorry who observed diffraction effects with beams of electrons scattered by crystals Davison and Thomson shared the Nobel prize in 1937 for their experimental discovery of diffraction of electrons by crystals the experimental arrangement used by Davison and Jomol is schematically shown in figure 11.7 It consists of an electron gun which comprises of a tungsten filament F coated with barium oxide. By filament are accelerated to desired velocity by applying potential voltage from a high voltage power supply. They are made to pass through a cylinder with fine holes along its axis producing a fine collimulated beam. This beam is made to fall on the surface of nickel crystal. The electrons are scattered in all directions by the atoms of the crystal. The intensity of the electron beam scattered in a dif- given direction is measured by the electron detector collector. The detector can be moved on circular scale and is connected to a sensitive galvanometer which records the current. The deflection of the galvanometer is proportional to the intensity of the electron beam entering the collector. The apparatus is enclosed in an evacuated chamber. By moving the detector on the circular scale at different positions, the experiment was performed by varying the accelerating voltage from 44 volt to 68 volt. It was noticed that a strong peak appeared in the intensity i of the scattered electron for an accelerating voltage of 54 volt at a scattering angle theta equal to 50 degree. The appearance of the peak in a particular direction is due to the constructive interference of electrons scattered from different layers of the regularly spaced atoms of the crystals. 
from the electron diffraction measurements the wavelength of matter waves was found to be 0.165 nanometer the de broglie wavelength lambda associated with electrons using equation 11.11 for v equals to 54 volt is given by lambda is equal to h upon p thus there is an excellent agreement with the theoretical value and the experimentally observed obtained value of de broglie wavelength Davison Germer experiment thus strikingly confirms the wave nature of electron and the de broglie relation more recently in 1989 the wave nature of beam of electron was experimentally demonstrated in a double slit experiment similar to that used for the wave nature of light also in an experiment in 1994 interference fringes were obtained with beams of iodine molecules which are about a million times more massive than electrons The de Broglie hypothesis has been basic to the development of modern quantum mechanics. It can also lead to the field of electron optics called microscope. Summary number 1. The minimum the minimum energy needed by an electron to come out of a metal surface is called work function of the metal. Energy greater than the work function required for electron emission from the metal surface can be supplied by suitably heating or applying strong electric field or irradiating it by light of suitable frequency number 2 photoelectric effect is phenomenon of emission of electrons by metals when illuminated by light of suitable frequency certain metals respond to ultraviolet light while others are sensitive even to the visible light photoelectric effect involves conversion of light energy into electrical energy it follows the law of conservation of energy the photoelectric emission is an instantaneous photoelectric current depends on the intensity of light the potential difference applied between the two electrodes and the nature of emitter material stopping potential b not depends on the frequency of incident light and the nature of emitter material for a given frequency of incident light it is independent of its intensity the stopping potential directly related to the maximum kinetic energy of electrons emitted ev not is equal to half mv square max is equal to k max <clears throat> number 5 below a certain frequency that is threshold frequency characteristic of a metal no photoelectric emission takes place no matter how large the intensity may be number 6 the classical wave theory could not explain the main features of photoelectric effect This picture of continuous observation of energy from radiation could not explain the dependence of Kmax on intensity, the existence of new not, and the instantaneous nature of the process. Einstein explained these features on the basis of photon picture of light. According to this, light is composed of discrete packets of energy called quanta or photons. Each photon carries an energy E and momentum P, which depends. on the frequency of incident light and not on its intensity photoelectric emission from the metal surface occurs due to absorption of a photon by an electron number 7 einstein's photoelectric equation is in accordance with the energy conservation law applied to the photon observation absorption by an electron in the metal the maximum kinetic energy half mv square max is equal to the photon energy h nu minus the work function phi not of the target material this photoelectric equation explains all the features of the photoelectric effect millikan's first precise measurements confirmed the einstein's photoelectric equation and obtained an accurate value of planck's constant h this led to the acceptance of particle or photon description of electromagnetic radiation introduced by einstein radiation has dual nature wave and particle The nature of experiment determines whether a wave probably attributed a wave like character to matter the waves associated with moving part material particles called the matter waves or de broglie waves number 9 the de broglie wavelength associated with a moving particle is related to its momentum p as lambda is equal to h upon p the dualism of matter is inherent in the de broglie relation with contains a wave concept and a particle concept the de broglie wavelength is independent of the charge and nature of the material particle it is significantly measurable 
only in the case of subatomic particles like electrons, protons, etc. However, it is indeed very small, quite beyond measurement in case of macroscopic objects commonly encountered in daily life, except of stationary orbits. Points to ponder. Number 1. Free electrons in a metal are free in the sense that they move inside the metal in a constant potential. They are not free to move out of the metal. They need additional energy to get out of the metal. Free electrons in a metal do not at all have the same energy. Like molecules in a gas jar, the electrons have different ener certain energy distribution at a given temperature. This distribution is different from the usual Maxwell's distribution that you have learned in the study of kinetic theory of gases. We will learn about it later in courses. But the difference has to do with the fact that electrons obey Pauli's exclusion principle. Number three, because of the energy distribution of free electrons in a metal, the energy required by an electron to come out of the metal is different for different electrons. Electrons with higher energy require less, ad less additional energy to come out of the metal than those with lower energies. Work function is the least energy required by an electron to come out of the metal. Number four, observations on photoelectric effects simply imply that the event of matter, light interaction, absorption of energy takes place in, in discrete units of h -nu. This is not quite the same as saying that light consists of particles each of energy h -nu. Number five, observations on the stopping potential are crucial discriminator between the wave picture and photon picture of photoelectric effect. Number six, the wavelength of matter wave given by lambda is equal to h upon p has physical significance. Its phase, its phase velocity, bp, has no physical significance. However, the group of velocity of matter wave is physically meaningful and equals to the velocity of the particle.